Now we're going to do our first lesson on flash photography for beginners. Now we're going to start this in a very simple way where all I'm going to do is explain to you everything about the flash and how it works. Uh, we're going to start with the pop-up flash on the camera and why we really don't want to use that and why we need to go to off-camera flash. Now this first lesson, as I said, is just bringing up points and giving you an overview of what it's all about. So let's get that started and don't forget that there'll be a second, third, fourth lesson. It's a very big subject. Most cameras have a pop-up flash, or most DSLRs, so I think we should start there. Uh, here's one. Now what I'm going to do is show you, there we go, well, I'm going to show you how they work and what's the best way of using them. When working on automatic, the camera will decide whether there's enough light. If there isn't, it'll pop up the flash. I think it's time now to look at the pros and cons of a pop-up flash. One of the great things that we can use a pop-up flash for is filling in shadows. Now we've got Vanessa here and she's got a very dark face when we expose for the background. But I want the background a lot darker. Well, she's going to go darker as well. So if I use my camera with a pop-up flash, I can flash at the same time. So you can use flash outside. Very good for this. We flash and we get her the right exposure, it allows us to, us to do what we want with the background. I can take it dark or I can make it lighter, do what I like, so I can light the two independently. Now here I am in bright sunlight, but Vanessa is really in shadow. I'll take a picture of her and we'll see. Well there she is. I find she's very dark. Let's, uh, I'll do another picture, lighten her up a bit, just by changing the aperture. I'm working in manual, so let's take a picture like that. Now that's much better, but the sky is very bright. The sky is almost white. So what have I got to do? To get the sky nice, I've got to expose the sky as I want it, and then put a fill-in flash on her. Let's have a go at that. Now I'll put on the flash and just do a shot of her. I don't, that, now I've got everything in the sky I need and I've got her perfectly exposed. Just shows that the pop-up flash can be very, very useful. Now as we get nearer, we can see the problem, the shadow around her head. Where, she ne where she's near the wall, we've got that nasty shadow. But where she's slightly away from the wall on the left-hand side, the shadow's not there. So with an off-camera flash, we don't have that problem. What I'll do in future lessons is, is do comparisons between the pop-up and the on-camera flash and off-camera flash. Well, we've looked at the pros and cons of the pop-up flash, and I think we'll get rid of it. And we'll have a look at some speed lights. Now, these are known as off-camera flashes, even though sometimes you put it on the camera. We have here three Nikons, all different sophistications and power. We've got an independent make. Now the independent make will be available in different version, versions for different cameras. Every make has to have a special flash. They're not interchangeable. They're all like this one. This is a Canon. Again, you see how similar they look? Let's have a look. Nikon, Canon, Nikon. Now they all move in these directions, from side to side, so you can point it back and reflect the light back to the subject with a white reflector or some other sort of modifier. They're called light modifiers. You can point it up at the ceiling and that will bounce the light off the ceiling and light the whole room. Now that's very useful. We have there that pops up a little diffuser and a white reflector that when it's pointing at the ceiling will light and make a little catch light in the person's eyes if you're shooting a person. So that's a very nice little thing. 
Now, I think it's very important that I tell you about hot shoes. Now, this is a hot shoe, and it has pins. Now, these pins will receive, in this case, from the camera, the message to fire and to adjust the exposure, etc. If we go over to the camera, you'll see that the pins correspond. Now, what I want to show you, and that's very important, is if we go over to the Nikon flash, the pins are in totally different position. And that's why if you're buying a flash, either second-hand or new, make sure that it's the right connection for your camera. Now, you may have heard the expression cold shoe. Well, the important thing about a cold shoe is that it only works on the centre point on the Nikon and the centre point on the Canon. Now, I'll show you something with a cold shoe. This is a flash that has a cold shoe. When connected to the camera and we fire the shutter, that will transmit to the flash that it's got to go off. Now that is good, but we do have a problem with second hand, or we can have a, set, a problem with second hand flashes. The voltage that this will send to the camera could be a lot too high and then blow your electrical circuits in the camera. So be very, very careful attaching an old flash with a center point on, an old, on a new DSLR. Now when I say the old flashes are dangerous because of excess voltage, if you can find one that says this, slave. Now the slave sign means that it will go off when it sees another flash go off. So it's not connected by cable or in any other way to the camera. Great advantage, because that means you can buy these in boot sales, markets, whatever you want, very, very cheaply because they're old. But as long as you don't attach them to the camera, these will go off. It'll see the flash from the other lights and this will flash. Now we've got a lot of stuff here and I'll tell you what it's all about. It's about firing the flash. Very simple, when we shot Vanessa, pop-up flash, flash went off. Now if we put this on the camera, exactly the same thing happens. So that's no problem. But supposing that's not on the camera? Well, there are several ways of doing it. Let's move a little bit of this out. There are several ways of doing it. One way is to use the pop-up flash. Now, if we set the camera right, now, to do that, I'll do that in another lesson, or you can read the 50-page book that tell you how to do it. But anyway, we can set the camera up so the pop-up flash will come up, but give a very small flash, just enough for this to see it and say, wow, off we go, we'll flash as well. That's because that's got the famous slave inside it. So that's one way, set the camera up to do it. This flash, it will be so faint that it won't influence the picture. So that's one way we can do it. Another way we can do it is attach a flexible hot shoe. Now the flexible hot shoe goes between the flash and the camera, but that's a bit limited, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit of a problem. So we'll, I don't really like that one. Now, we can also use a cable. Now, this cable can be sort of any length. The trouble is, with the cable, you haven't got any automatic exposure because it's not a hot shoe. I hate that. What else have we got? We've got ways of firing the flash, actually, that, um, again, aren't automatic. But we can put a laser attachment and that'll make it work. We can put a sound attachment. Now the sound attachment, it'll hear the noise and make the flash go off. It doesn't fire the camera though, so the camera's got to be in the dark, as it has with the laser. The laser will just go across to here. When something goes across the beam, boof, flash goes off. So that's great shooting at night outside if you're waiting for animals to cross it. We have lots of little things that half of it goes on the flash and on the camera and the other half sits on the flash. One transmits to the other. Now these come in all prices. 
The better ones, of course, are very expensive. For example, we have the Pocket Wizard. Now, one of these sits on top of the camera, like that, and the other one sits under the flash, hangs. Un That's the one that hangs under the flash and attaches to it, whoops, attaches to it, and that's the one that fits on top of the camera. So one will talk to the other. Now you can also, with the very sophisticated ones, you can set the power of the flash, etc., from the camera. So, but these can cost in the three, four hundred pounds. So we want to avoid those. Anyway, you have all these ways. Now I'm going to show you in later lessons a bit more about those and how you can make them work. Well, I think that's probably enough for this first lesson. Just That just shows you what a complicated uh, subject it is, but it's not, it's not difficult. And it's not difficult since the ETTL or the TTL has come into existence. Does it a lot, a lot automatically. So it's just a matter of learning a little bit. In the old days, we used to have to use rulers and measures and work out what change the flash bulbs. <laughs> anyway, look forward to the next lesson with you. I hope you enjoyed that one. Bye.